Hey there, 10 TV Plus. I'm meteorologist Michael Barron. Thanks for joining us on today's 10 weather impact show. We do have a weather impact alert in place as we head into this weekend. It's going to come on Sunday for the risk of strong to severe storms. So I want to go ahead and dive right into that. What we're looking at is Sunday evening through early Monday morning. A line of strong storms is looking possible to push through. The bad part about this is a lot related to timing. It's going to happen after dark. All threats for severe weather are possible, but we think wind is probably going to be the biggest concern. Make sure you're staying tuned and staying connected. Have the 10 TV app and the weather network app downloaded to your phone ahead of time. That way you won't miss any alerts and you can watch any live streams that we end up doing related to those storms. Before we get there, though, we've got a big warm up on the way. Cloudy skies out there through the midday across central Ohio at noon. Temperatures were still in the 50s, but those are going to warm rapidly as we head through the afternoon. In fact, we're expecting to be in the 70s by 5, 6, 7 o'clock tonight. In fact, could even see some sunshine as we head into this evening. It's going to be a nice end to the day, especially for one that's been kind of rainy and stormy to start out. It's going to be a lovely Friday evening to get out and take in any of your plans. Rain chances out there really fall off throughout the afternoon. In fact, we're pretty much down to zero by the evening commute. Again, no impacts to those plans as you head through tonight. What we are going to watch, though, is what remains of the rain as it exits the region and then our next system, which could bring us those severe storms this weekend. Believe it or not, actually still forming out toward Utah. This is going to be working its way all the way across the country here in the next uh, 48 to 72 hours, and it's going to be on our doorsteps as we head into Sunday. So if that might Mind. Let's time things out hour by hour. Here's what we're looking at. We'll watch the remainder of the rain shower and thunder activity push out this afternoon. We're back to dry weather as we head toward this evening. We're talking say six, seven o'clock tonight. Again, may even see sunshine across the region as we work our way through the rest of the evening. Mostly dry conditions through early Saturday. We pick up the cloud cover a little bit as we head into Saturday morning. It's going to be a little bit of a gloomy Saturday. We're talking mostly cloudy to partly cloudy skies. Can we guarantee there won't be a little bit of rain that comes through at some point with those clouds? Not completely, but I don't think it's going to be anything that you need to adjust your plans for, at least not meaningfully. You can keep most of your plans in place. Our temperatures will be in the 70s. It's going to be a decent Saturday to get out and enjoy. As we head towards Saturday evening, Saturday night, that's when we see things start to change. Widespread rain will push in as we head toward early Sunday. These showers out there, the longer they can hold around into the day Sunday, the less severe chance we'll have in the evening. So you want this rain to stick around as much as possible early in the day. If this pushes out a little bit earlier than say two, three o'clock, our severe weather chances are going to increase because that means we'll get more sunshine, we'll get more warmth and we'll get more destabilization in the atmosphere. The newest models as of this afternoon pushing that rain out by about two, three o'clock. You can see some clearing on the back end, and that's the concerning part. Again, how much solar energy can we get into the environment before the sun goes down? The more we do, the warmer it gets the more chance for strong storms we'll have later in the night. That round of severe storms, unfortunately, not going to come again until after dark. As we head even close to midnight, you can see that storm line working its way into central Ohio, pushing through as we head into early Monday morning and eventually pushing on out as we head into the day Monday. That'll be a big change in temperature that comes along with it. And again, the possibility for strong to severe storms. So here's what we're looking at in the severe weather outlook, most of central Ohio under a level two out of five risk for storms on Sunday, and in particular that storm system that comes through Sunday night. Further to the west, this is where the higher risk for severe weather is. We're talking level three out of five from just east of Dayton, more like Springfield, all the way back through central Indiana. Our biggest concerns are likely to be wind and heavy rain, but we can't rule out hail or the potential for tornadoes either, so make sure you're staying weather aware as we head into this weekend. After we get past this system, it's not long before our next chance for rain comes. We're dry as we head toward Tuesday, but then as we get toward Wednesday, Thursday next week, our rain chances spike back up. 
This comes with another spike in temperatures in your 10 day or your seven day outlook. And again, we could be looking at the possibility for storms next Wednesday and Thursday as well. Not enough for a weather impact alert day yet, but we are monitoring those two days next week. We're still mostly concerned about this day here on Sunday because this is where we have the highest risk for severe storms. And again, I just want to hammer home that timeline that we've been talking about Sunday after six o'clock into the early AM hours of Monday, rain, wind and storms all in the forecast. Make sure you have a way to get weather alerts as we head into the evening, especially if you go to bed early. You don't want to be uh, taken by surprise in the night by one of these storms. The temperatures really drop after we get past the storm Sunday. We go from the 70s down into a 60 degree temperature early in the day Monday. I think those temperatures will be even colder by later in the afternoon, and then we drop down to 51 by Tuesday and then right back up the ladder 68 as we head toward Wednesday 67 Thursday. No surprise that that jump in temperature again comes with the risk for some storms. Some of those storms that could be strong once again as we head toward next week. We'll have to keep a close eye on those as we get past this forecast and this round of storms into what comes just a little bit down the road. Of course, we'll be keeping you up to date here at 10 TV throughout the weekend um, and on the 10 TV app and 10 TV plus. So make sure you're following us for all those latest updates and with more rain expected this weekend. AAA does have some reminders for drivers on how to safely drive during those stormy conditions. First and foremost, they remind you to slow down while the roads are wet and leave plenty of distance between you and the next car. They say to make sure your tires are properly inflated and have working windshield wipers, windshield wipers that aren't going to uh, blur or streak the window is a good idea. Check your headlights, brake lights and tail lights to make sure that you're visible to other drivers on the road and never use cruise control in wet weather. If you do begin to hydroplane, always look and steer in the direction you want to go. And switching now to new and dramatic video that comes out of Thailand and Myanmar, a powerful earthquake hit Myanmar and neighboring Thailand on Friday, turning a major hospital uh, in the Myanmar capital into a mass casualty area, and trapping dozens of workers in an under construction skyscraper in Bangkok. The 7.7 .7 magnitude tremor hit the northwest of the city of Sangyan early on Friday afternoon at a shallow depth. The United States Geological Survey said a 6.4 magnitude aftershock also hit the same area minutes later. At least 150 people were reported dead as of Friday afternoon and 730 injured. Sadly, leaders are expecting those numbers to rise. And turning now back home to the wildfires burning across the Carolinas, South Carolina's Table Rock Fire, in fact, nearly doubled in size earlier this week on Wednesday, covering more than 4,500 acres. And in North Carolina, firefighters are making progress on two major fires, but dry, windy conditions have been keeping the risk factors high. Dave Malkoff is on the ground in Mill Spring, North Carolina. This didn't burn down yesterday. No, this, this was happened three days after the Halloween hit. Kaylee Huff just remodeled this trailer, a larger home for her and her boyfriend. Helene's winds plus one candle burned it to the ground. If it wasn't for the community, I don't know where, where we'd be right now. They've helped out a lot. And she may have to evacuate again. This week, the fires have covered more than 7,000 acres across North and South Carolina. I jumped in the car and just hoping to get over here and make sure the animals were out of the house and they were okay. And didn't really care about nothing. As long as mom and dad were okay, that's all I cared about. Helene made this firefight difficult in a couple of ways. Number one, firefighters had problems getting in here because of all these trees that were pushed down by the hurricane. Number two, they have been sitting there for six months, drying out, becoming firewood. As the fires keep growing, North Carolina's Governor Josh Stein has expanded the state of emergency. It seems like North Carolina can't catch a break. You know, a hurricane, 2,000 landslides, now these wildfires. They're all over the place. There's some 500 fires affecting nearly 10,000 acres this month alone. That's three times what is typical for this time of year. So far, no lives have been lost in Huff's neighborhood despite a hurricane a flood and two fires. 
we're just thankful to be here and we we all were good and health wise and just keep trucking until another day gets here and as the sun came down on thursday night i could already smell more smoke than we smelled all day neighbors have come up to us concerned that the wind could switch direction and come back here once again. The governor has shored up a lot of resources here in North Carolina, bringing in firefighters from as far away as Eastern North Carolina to here in Western North Carolina. I'm Dave Malkoff, CBS News. And you heard Dave talking there about the impacts of Helene on the current wildfires in the Carolinas. And that's just one of a number of factors complicating what is still a very in progress recovery after last year's storm. That deadly storm washed away people's homes and their cherished belongings. Skylar Henry returned to hard hit Asheville to see how the survivors are doing now. Uprooted trees and wreckage still line the Swannanoa River in Asheville, North Carolina. It serves as a painful snapshot of Helene's fury. Holy. Six months ago, rushing floodwaters washed away homes that once stood feet away from the river. Among the debris, these photos in Taylor Shanker's office. She first spotted them during a walk checking out the damage. So she began collecting them and after a while started looking for more. For me, that's one thing that I could do to help was to go and walk these riverbanks and see if I could find any more photos and then share them online. Now the photos are mostly all dry. Determined to uh, return them, like she cleaned what she there? could and then posted the pictures on social media on a profile she called Photos from Helene so people could claim them. How many do you think you've found? Oh, there's like well into 600 photos. Um, and now I have reunited almost 80, which is really exciting. Mud caked photos are of babies, weddings, birthday parties, pets and school portraits. This is the bag of photos that Mary has recently found. Mary is Mary Moss. Some of the pictures Shanker collected belong to Moss. And then that's her son, Dallas. And she's and still she finding Moss's photos. So this is the steps to my house. Floodwater swept away her family home and everything inside. They lived there for 40 years. I come bearing <laughs> gifts. How oh, are you? Oh, right. Look at that. <laughs> this is nice to meet you. Shanker has reunited oh, nearly 40 photos with Moss. That's my baby Dallas. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. Like thousands of people in Western North Carolina, life looks nothing like it did before the storm. You sit there and watch everything you, you own go down the river, but the only thought is the, those, those memories and those things that you can't replace. Moss and her family are one of the more than 150,000 receiving help from FEMA. The storm caused tens of billions of dollars worth of damage. Officials say it'll take years to fully bounce back. What's it been like for you guys in the month since all of this? <sighs> Unreal. <laughs> you know, we're trying to take one day at a time. The road to recovery is long for Moss as well, and, but uh, she's grateful for the treasure trove Shanker has found for her. The river couldn't take my memories, but it sure as heck took uh, all the things that, you know, I treasure the most. And with hundreds of photographs still unclaimed, Shanker says she's continuing the project until many of the photos find their way back home. I feel like it's such a privilege to be able to give people back these memories. And so to be able to sit with them in their grief and just like say, I'm so glad that you made it, it's been really special to have that moment with people. I'm Skylar Henry in Asheville, North Carolina. Finally today, let's check out some new video into us here at 10 TV. Crews performed dozens of water rescues in southern Texas as intense thunderstorms unleashed flash floods late Thursday into early Friday. Fire officials from the city of Alamo in Hidalgo County confirmed at least 50 water rescues on Thursday. At one point, an emergency vehicle was unable to rescue a pregnant woman having contractions, but a fire truck eventually made it through the flood waters. Impressive video from down south there. That's in the Rio Grande Valley uh, portion of Texas. 
and just looking at those photos, I mean, that water down there, certainly uh, no joke. Glad they were able to get everybody out uh, of that rescue there. And to another video here, people in the northeast U.S. in Canada can actually look up to the sky for something kind of special this weekend. That would be a partial solar eclipse. It'll be visible Saturday morning, unfortunately not here in Ohio. This eclipse will take place sometime before 5 and last until almost 9 a.m. Eastern time, depending on where you live. According to space.com, it should look like the moon got a bite taken out of it by the sun. Scientists say some sky gazers may even be able to see a double sunrise, which is what happens when the moon makes the rising sun look like it has two horns. It's kind of interesting, but take precaution. Experts say you do need those special eclipse viewing glasses to see that eclipse safely. I was keeping a close eye on that map earlier this week, but like I said, unfortunately, not going to make it here to Ohio. We had that great eclipse last year and it was beautiful views across the region when that came through and you know it's going to be a while before we have another one, but if you get the chance, definitely make it out to go see it. That's going to be it for today's weather update here on 10 TV plus coming up later tonight at six. Chief meteorologist Jerry Martz will have the very latest on our 10 TV weather impact alert day for this weekend. Until then, you can catch more news and weather online at 10 TV.com. Have a great afternoon.